Remember, whatever inconvenience in your life there is, um, you can always monetize it. So, if you're new here, I'm a vintage girly. I've been wearing vintage since, let's say, 2016. And one of the things that is super annoying when you're starting out is how long it takes to actually build a vintage wardrobe because is expensive. Vintage clothes are expensive, modern clothes that look vintage are expensive. It's an expensive hobby, like obviously yes you can thrift, but at the end of the day you end up preferring things that are just exactly what you want them to be instead of like, yeah it kind of works. <laughs> so for the past couple of years I have been carefully and slowly curating my vintage wardrobe, including my summer wardrobe. Probably the peak of my summer wardrobe creation was 2020 when I made a video about sewing my whole vintage wardrobe and like obviously yes, some of the things that I made back then sucked and I never wore them again, but most of them, they were okay. I was wearing them every summer, I've worn them every summer since 2020, they were like a staple in my wardrobe. So those clothes were sort of the base of my wardrobe. With actual vintage clothes, I tend to not buy summer clothes because you need to wash them a lot. Like you get sweaty, it's a mess, and the more you wash vintage clothes, the bigger chances are of them deteriorating. So overall, I don't have a lot of vintage clothes during the summer. I did have, however, a couple of vintage swimsuits. I had a 60s swimsuit, I had a 50s swimsuit that was like exactly what I was looking for, and, and I also had a two-piece play suit that I wore once. You can see where this is going. Anyway, so that was sort of my vintage wardrobe. I also did have a couple of lightweight jackets and for some reason I thought it's a good idea to pack one just in case it's cold. It wasn't supposed to be cold and thank God for that because otherwise I would also pack a lot of like sweaters and stuff. Basically, when you're a vintage girly and you're going on holidays, you want to look your best. I'm not your typical influencer, like I probably won't take a picture of every outfit that I wear, but I will take some. Like if the outfit slays, uh, obviously I'm gonna document it. <laughs> I may never post it, but I want to have a proof of how good I looked. So when you're going abroad, especially Italy, you're like, okay, I need to pack my very best. And that's sort of what happened. I packed all of my summer stuff, but like the, the best of the best. And I also packed pairs of shoes that were actually not that great because I knew I'm going to do a lot of like walking and sightseeing. So this is actually a blessing in disguise. To add some context, this winter I gained a little bit of weight, which is not a normal occurrence for me, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. Like, so what? <laughs> the only issue is that the clothes, especially the ones that I made, did not really fit me. Some of them did, some of them didn't, so a lot of them I ended up not taking because I couldn't wear them anyway. Some of them I ended up altering right before the trip, and some of them I was just like, I know they're tight, but I'm, I'm just gonna have to work with it. <laughs> Additionally, my vintage wardrobe consisted of reproduction pieces from modern vintage style shops. I had a couple of pairs of shorts, I had long trousers made of linen, I also had dresses, I had blouses, I think. So yeah, that was a big part of my wardrobe. I also packed a dress that I got as a gift from my Instagram friend who started her own slow fashion brand. Obviously I wanted to take pictures in it, but in June the weather was kind of nasty and I kept postponing it and I ended up thinking, okay, I'm gonna take pictures of the dress in Italy because it's gonna be a beautiful background. So I took the dress, I wore it once before. It's obviously like gorgeous, handmade, made to measure and I packed it. And then I also was like, okay, I'm almost finished with my 18th century working class outfit. What if I took pictures of it? on beautiful streets of an Italian Tuscany town. And the only reason I didn't do it is because I ran out of space. But if I did that, I would also pack this camera and a tripod and probably a microphone or maybe even like a gimbal. But I did not because I ran out of space. So all these things were safely left behind. Apart from my wardrobe, I also packed a couple of books that I was intending to read my vintage camera, my laptop because I was like, I need to work, card games, and my sewing kit because I was still sewing some pieces for the 18th century outfit. So this is the backstory of what I had packed for my holidays. Now, the holidays, it was a road trip to Italy 
we were supposed to spend a couple of days in Rome picking up my sister who just finished her studies and then we were supposed to like go down to Napoli and then we were supposed to just like drive around. We didn't really have a plan, it was super last minute. I mean it wasn't but it kind of was, like we didn't have time to plan it out. So we were just sort of supposed to wing it as we go and just decide where we were going after. The first stop in Italy was Rome though. That was like the beginning of the trip. So my sister was staying in Rome, so we came to pick her up and we had an Airbnb rented and then I was staying at hers because we still needed to like pack and there wasn't enough space in the Airbnb. Now, another piece of background information, this was not our first time. We have done numerous road trips to Italy, we drove like all around the country, we have been in Rome like three times and each time we went camping because that's what my family always does, we always go camping, it's a tradition, we love it, it's fun, we've got all of the system laid out, like we've got all of the stuff that we need for the tent, we've got the tent, we've got all of the stuff and we're just looking for nice campings to stay. So like it's not, we're not noobs, <laughs> like it's not our first time, we've had numerous situations where that could have happened to us and it did not. Like, We've been in Balkans, we've been in France, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Spain, Italy, Scandinavia, the UK, like basically all over Europe. It was never an issue before and we always travel the same, like we have our car packed to the max, like to the point that my dad who is driving cannot see with like the rear view mirror because it's so full. So it's always been like that, like our car was always full <laughs> with luggage. And again, we have been in Rome with this setup before. We have been staying in Rome with, with our trunk full. So we arrive in Rome, we're having a good time. And then what, you wonder? Well, my friends, you'll find out shortly. But speaking of crime, justice, detectives, and cute vintage clothes, this video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s. The main character, June is trying to solve a family mystery and then a series of strange events. Apart from searching for vintage objects and beautifully created sceneries and scenes, you can decorate and fix your own mansion, garden and island, you can collect stickers in a sticker album, you can participate in different competitions with your friends in your own club. There is just a lot to do. That's what I love about June's Journey. There's just so many different options of how you want to spend time in the game and if you get bored of one option you just do something else and I love that. Ah, no, 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 no. Where is it? Uh, oh. So if that sounds like something you're interested in follow the link in the description to download June's Journey for free today. It's available on Android, iOS and Facebook games so go get it! So we arrive in Rome, we're having a good time, our car is parked next to the Airbnb because the Airbnb is facing a busy road and there is no parking space. We are parked around the corner. It's literally like behind the building next to like a small square with other like apartment buildings. It's not the city center, it's not a touristy area. It was Trastevere but it was the south part of Trastevere, like right where it ends basically. It was not a touristy spot at all. It was just like locals. We spent a day or two just sightseeing. When we arrived, we took a couple of bags to the Airbnb and to my sister's place because we needed them. But obviously we're not gonna take out all of the stuff because it was like a fridge, the bag full of card games and books, a bag full of shoes. Like we're not gonna take all of it out. It was supposed to be a two week trip. So there was a lot of stuff and you obviously don't need it for like two nights stay. Plus it would not fit in an Airbnb because it was a lot of stuff. And we're also not gonna check in all of the luggage somewhere because A, this is not a touristy spot. At the closest luggage check-in would be like probably five kilometers away. And then B, we're gonna need the stuff. We will have to like completely repack for two nights, take all of the stuff that we need, like pajamas, undergarments, fresh clothes, and everything, just different shoes, socks. We would have to take like all of this stuff out, pick it out from the luggage, leave all of that behind. Then we'll have to repack, take it back from the luggage storage. Not to mention luggage storage in Rome is probably like 10 euros per bag. We had like 20 bags. That would be super expensive. So yeah, no, obviously we didn't do that. You may call us dumb, <laughs> but 
thinking about it now, no, I would not do that. Like, you just do not expect someone to break in. <laughs> and also, honestly, it did not look that tempting. It was not those nice Louis Vuitton suitcases. It was like piles of trash in that trunk. So that's also kind of surprising that someone looked at it and was like, that looks expensive. Because that was basically 20 year old sports bags filled with shoes. <laughs> anyway, we were sightseeing and then I think on our second night, which was coincidentally a night before a bank holiday when everything was closed, I went to get something from the car. I think that was like pajamas or something. I went to the car to get pajamas. That was around 10 30 p.m. So I went to the parking lot. Well, not really a parking lot. It was like a parking spot near the building and I opened the trunk and I took the stuff and I closed it and then I went to sleep. <laughs> and then the next morning we were like, whoa, let's go have some breakfast. We had cornettos and cappuccino and we're like, whoa, Italy, Rome, la la la. And my dad was like, wow, this is a really nice district. Like I thought it's way more dangerous. And then <laughs> I think he needed like a new pair of socks or something. So we went to the car before going sightseeing again. And we went to the car the trunk was closed. So we didn't see anything, but my dad was like, the trunk does not open. Like maybe the keys are just, the battery is dead or something. Then he eventually managed to open it manually, I think. And you know, it's one of those automatic trunks that are like slowly raising on their own. We were like standing there, it was like a movie scene. It was like slowly raising up to show us an empty trunk. And we just stood there like the standing emojis and we're like, like complete denial. <laughs> Cause it was clean. It was empty. It was, there was nothing in it. They left the fridge, just some random items, and it was completely empty. My brain, which was in complete denial, was like, Dad must have taken it up to the Airbnb for some reason. Maybe he thought it's a good joke. But then I looked at my dad and I was like, he's looking at me the same way. Like, this is, um... But you know how your brain works? It's just, it refuses to believe. I was like, it has to be somewhere in here. Anyway, my first thought, was I left the trunk open. I forgot to close it or I forgot to close the car and it all happened because of me. But then we saw the broken window and I was like, ah, we're good, we're good. <laughs> when we saw the broken window, it was like another punch because we knew it's gonna complicate our trip. At this point we were like, I guess we're going home. <laughs> we spent like a good 20 minutes trying to figure out what happened and trying to figure out what they left because it was not, a quick robbery. It was not, oh my god, we've broken the window, now we've got to be quick because what if someone sees us and then we get caught? No, they took their sweet time. They had the time to open all our luggage and they had the time to look through it and see what's valuable, which also does not make sense because if they did, why did they take so many random stuff? We know that they had the time to open the luggage because they left things that were inside the luggage. They left my dad's sweater, it was like laid out in the middle of the trunk, just my dad's sweater. They left two towels, but they took two other towels. And they also left some of my shoes, which I'm actually a little offended about because what the hell. <laughs> they left my hat, which again, excuse me, do you not consider it valuable enough? Girl, that's a pancake. But then they also left my dad's camera. Which was genuinely the most expensive thing in the car. And I'm just like... Why? <laughs> Why? 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 They had the time to take my dad's sweater out, but they also took polished books. They also took card games. They took two towels and they left two. What was this robbery about? Are they going to resell? Do they just need clothes? I'm so confused. To this day, I don't know what this was about because if it was a typical, we need some cash robbery, they got nothing. They got my own laptop which was a shame because obviously I was really stressed about them getting like personal information and stuff, but it was three years old. In laptop life, that's 88. <laughs> obviously it was still working fine and I was pissed 
but they're not gonna get a good amount of money for that. I don't think so. So the thing is they left a lot of traces in the car that if someone took us seriously could actually be useful. They left a lot of footprints. They definitely left their biological material probably all over the car. And just the thought of someone touching your stuff was so disgusting that we did ended up throwing the towels away. There was also some snacks in the car that were not open, but we we're like, those are thief snacks now. Like I can't eat this knowing someone touched it. What if they had diarrhea before? They also took my sewing kit, which again, did you not check beforehand? It was literally a roll of VNA print fabric that I hand sewn into this little 18th century sewing kit. If they looked inside, all they could find inside was like threads and needles <laughs> and scissors. So like my dude, this is why I'm still confused as to what the real motive of the robbery was because if it was about the money, they would not take the most random stuff. Also, why was my dad's camera in the front seat? <laughs> because this is just lame. It was completely visible. It was just right out there. There was some other rubbish in there and then the camera was right in between the trash. So, <laughs> anyway, we assessed the damage and we're like, okay, we're gonna have to find a police station. Now, we did not have high hopes. We were robbed once before, it happened in Barcelona. It was a different kind of robbery where they slit our tire and instead of getting into the trunk, they just took all they could find in the front seats as we were trying to sort the tire out. And again, they failed miserably. They only got like 20 euros cash. They took a bag that they thought is a camera bag but it was actually full of sanitary pads and a bottle of juice. <laughs> and they completely missed out on the fact that I had a camera inside my wicker bag, which was in the shape of a hen, which I'm assuming they didn't think was serious enough to actually hold anything valuable. So the Barcelona robbery was more about how we felt with the fact that we've been robbed than the actual value of the things they got. But I do remember the treatment of us in Barcelona and while the first police station that we arrived at actually took us seriously and was like determined to do something about it, they didn't know any English. So they were like, we're gonna have to transfer you to another police station. And they transferred us to another police station, which was full of people that had the same thing happen to them. So obviously we knew that the chances of them taking it seriously are pretty slim because it's it just keeps happening. So we filed a report and that was it. We knew nothing's gonna happen. But this time it was more serious, but knowing the Barcelona experience, we were like, yeah, this is not gonna go well. And I actually stayed with the car because the window was not there and it just felt kind of weird to leave it open like that. So I just stayed with the car and they went to the police station. It took them like half an hour because there was one nearby. They came back, they were like, yep, yeah, they didn't speak any English and they made us fill a report. That was it. <laughs> so again, our hopes were not high. I absolutely did not expect anything to happen. We did have a look around at the nearby trash cans because maybe they dropped something there. Maybe they left the suitcases with all of the stuff they didn't need nothing was found and there were like several big trashy areas right next to the parking spot so they did something it would probably be there and then we were like okay it's bank holiday though so even if we wanted to fix our window a nothing is open and b you usually have to order the window and it's gonna take like weeks for it to arrive and at this point my dad was like i really feel like going home <laughs> And I, I, I gave him a pep talk. I was like, that's exactly what they want you to think. You cannot give up now, because that's what they want us to do. And he was like, you know what, you're right, you're right, we're staying. So we stayed, but the problem was we still had one night at the Airbnb and we had one night at my sister's place before her rent was dupe. <laughs> no, before her lease ended. So she had one night and we had like one night to sort out the car situation, get new clothes, because obviously we didn't have any clothes, and basically help her move out. <laughs> The good thing about my family is that humor is our coping mechanism. So one of the first things that we said was like, well, at least we're, we got rid of the space problem. <laughs> we're obviously gonna fit in all of her stuff now that we don't have any. Knowing my clothes got stolen, I was also like, 
You know what? I gained weight anyway. They weren't fitting me. <laughs> so for now, our main problem was we need to find another parking because now this one is stressing us out. And while we were looking for a parking, I also realized that the square where we parked the car was full of people that looked suspicious and it was so frustrating because you were like, they might even be the ones that did it to us and now they're just like sitting on a bench and laughing at us and we would never know. But also I was like, if I was a robber, I would probably not sit around on a bench. <laughs> there was like a water source right next to the car and there was this one guy that kept walking towards the water and we were like, yeah, maybe he did it. We don't know. Like, he looks suspicious to me. And then he walked next to us. He was like, <laughs> he started talking in Polish. He was like, oh, have a good trip. We're like, not anymore. Thank you. And I felt so bad. But anyway, now our main mission was to find a parking spot that was in a different place because this one traumatized us. And even though there was nothing left to leave in the car, we were like, they might as well take the car at this point. So we were trying to find a parking spot for the car, but the problem was we had a trunk that was at the top of the car that also kind of saved us because all the tent and the camping stuff was in that trunk uh, that was on the coffin trunk, is it called? That was on top of the car and that, that one was locked. So they didn't touch that one and all of our camping stuff was there, like most of it. So we still could go camping. But because of that trunk, we would not fit in any of the underground parkings. We had to find one that was tall enough and that had CCTV at least and that was open on a bank holiday. So that, that took us like a good two hours. But when we did, we, we just went for a chill walk and we're like, you know what, we're gonna just keep on sightseeing because like we've got nothing to lose now like what they're gonna do rob us <laughs> we just went for a walk and we just spent our last day chilling because like what else can you do like, everything's closed we reported it we might as well do something fun but then the next day i had to go and find us some clothes <laughs> they were packing all of this stuff from my sister's place and during that time i was on a shopping spree and it was one of the most guilty i felt in years because I basically had to walk into one of those cheap fast fashion chain stores and buy a lot of stuff and I have not done that for a while. Obviously I have bought fast fashion stuff during the past couple of years but it was like one item a year and every time I felt really bad and then I kept wearing it for the next couple of years and I intended to wear it for like years to come. So that was new to me and it also made me realize how bad those shops are. Like no offense. First of all, everything's sold out anyways. There's nothing in your size. Second of all, the quality is obviously not fantastic. And third of all, the fit. It's really strange because those things just don't fit me. I don't know why, because as I said, I've bought from like retro modern brands, which also use the same manufacturing methods. And yet modern retro clothing fits me like a glove. Like it just looks good. Whereas everything I tried on, I was like, <sighs> Cool. because it was just not it. So I made an attempt to get the most vintage looking pieces I could find for myself and then I also bought clothes for everyone else. I went to the register and the lady was like, mama. Like she just looked at the pile of clothes I presented and I was like, no, it's not what you think. Like I'm not addicted to fast fashion. We just got robbed, no, no, no. And she was like, non capisco. That was my fast fashion experience. I also was trying to buy things that I will actually keep wearing when we're back. Like I would not have to just toss them away. So far I think I feel like I've been successful. I got some pieces that worked in like a vintage setting but also what the hell is wrong with modern swimsuits because that hurt. I was trying on one pieces because I'm used to wearing one pieces and every size I tried the bra cups would not even reach my actual bra area. Um, why? I tried all of the sizes because I was like, if it's big, at least it's long, right? No, no, apparently I'm a giant. I don't know what happened. That was a traumatizing experience. And you know what I ended up doing? I bought a one piece that was too short and then I bought a 
a bikini top and I just cut the one piece and made a bikini bottom out of it so that was the only way I could deal with like what the hell was happening in that damn shop anyway yeah and then we just went on to have our holidays in probably different places than we expected because we ended up not going to Napoli because we were like yeah now mm -mm. we tended to stay close to like smaller towns and we also had to use like a piece of cardboard for our window because it was just not available it ended up being a nice holiday in the end. The only thing that tainted it was me constantly remembering all of the stuff that I packed. You know when you think about a piece of clothing that you used to have and you're like, what happened to it? I used to do that, but then the answer would be I packed it last minute. I just shoved it in the suitcase. This is what's frustrating to me is like remembering all of the stuff that is gone and knowing how close you were to like not taking it at all. But to be fair, the worst part for me was all of the things of the sentimental value that were lost. For example, the old camera that I used to have, the vintage swimsuits. There was a book that I found in a park once. There was my sewing kit. That kind of sucked because I used it since 2019 when I made it and and it had those cute scissors that I bought on a family trip. So like all of those things. And then it also had like a metal sewing pin container that I got probably also in Italy years back. So it just kind of sucked knowing that they won't sell it anyway. Like they were not of any value to them, but they were of value to me. So that was the worst part of it. But overall, I was surprised at how much I did not care about things that were of actual value. Like my laptop, couldn't care less. Let them have it, like, I don't care. <laughs> also, the problem with the clothing that I got from modern reproduction shops is that they're small brands and they usually put out small batches of clothing. So at first I thought to myself, oh, as soon as I get back home, I'm just gonna order the same pieces again. But the problem is even if I bought those pieces like last summer, they've already sold out. So there's just no way of getting the same pieces again. So that also was kind of frustrating, but most of all, is like the absolute sheer audacity of someone using your trust in humanity and completely obliterating your holiday plans. I hope they step on Legos, not gonna lie. <laughs> During our trip, I was debating on whether or not to tell people on Instagram about it because I did not want people to judge me for being stupid or just give me stupid advice but at the same time I thought well maybe there is like a minimal chance that someone will actually be selling the clothes and if I show the clothes maybe someone will find them but I also kind of wanted to vent so I posted about it on my Instagram and people started making memes about the event which was honestly the highlight of the whole experience. I still laugh just thinking about some of them. So that was definitely worth it. At least something good came out of it. But overall, yeah, it was definitely a life lesson in being a tourist. The only thing I regret, like maybe that was kind of stupid just leaving my laptop in the car, but it also it wasn't like laying around there. It was actually hidden in the stuff. So, but that was kind of stupid of me not taking it upstairs, but also it was not that expensive. <laughs> Like, okay, yeah, obviously it is a huge loss and buying a new laptop was, I had no idea they're that pricey now, but at the same time, it was not the first thing I thought I'm gonna have to bring upstairs, which is weird. But also it kind of makes you think, we've been traveling for ever since I can remember and we always did it the same way. We packed our car, we filled it like up to the top and then we just went camping. It never happened. 2018 was the Barcelona experience and then this year this happened. So it just makes you think, it's getting dangerous, but also people are getting really desperate. Maybe that's what's a bit worrying. But also knowing how Italian institutions work, they're pretty lax about a lot of things, so it doesn't really surprise me. I just wish it wasn't this particular thing that they're lax about, but you know, it has its advantages, I guess, where you don't stress out about every detail in your life and you don't follow rules, but also it can bite you back. And the funny thing is I'm always really, really paranoid about getting pickpocketed. So I'm always like, my bag zipper has to be in front of me so I can see if someone's trying to open it. I'm always really careful about stuff like that. So that's kind of ironic that that doesn't really translate into me thinking the car is maybe not 
untouchable. <laughs> but overall, ever since I came back from the trip, I started slowly buying things and that just reminded me how expensive vintage clothes are because what I used to have, I collected during the span of five or seven years, whereas now I was trying to get all of it at once and it did not end well. <laughs> I bought two pairs of pants from Emmy Design because that's what they stole from me. I bought one pair of shorts from the House of Foxy. I went on Vinted and I was trying to find reproduction vintage dresses and stuff. This is this was actually on Vinted as well. Then I was also trying to make my own things, but I kind of ran out of time. I was planning on making a whole new vintage wardrobe, similarly to what I did in 2020, but I just kind of ran out of time. So next year, perhaps, please keep in mind that I do not need any financial help whatsoever. Like I did buy the laptop. It's all good. The wardrobe will slowly come together. There is other people that actually need your help. So please do not reach out to me trying to give me stuff. I'm good. I'm honestly good. But yeah, if, th if this could be a lesson to anyone, feel free to, <laughs> to learn. <laughs> I have come to terms with the fact that all these things were stolen from me and they're probably gonna be thrown away because like, where are they gonna sell clothes made by me? The seams are unfinished, my dude. Like, nobody's gonna buy that. <laughs> Who's gonna buy a vintage swimsuit? Be, be for real. Nobody's gonna buy it. I know a lot of you were like, oh, if, if that wasn't Trastevere, you should check out the Porta Portese market and see if they sell any of your clothes there. My dude, I've been there. I've been there in February when I visited. It's not that kind of market. They do have a lot of clothes that are obviously like modern clothes. Nobody's gonna sell used, badly made, vintage style clothing in there. Maybe my camera could end up there. Maybe some shoes could end up there. But the clothing they're selling, it does not look that used. My clothing on the other hand, was very loved. So I don't I don't think that's that's gonna happen. They only had like one stand full of old nightgowns, which basically looked like an antique shop stand. Like I don't think the owner robbed an old grandma of her nightgowns. We didn't have the time to stay until Sunday anyway to go to the market, but if we did, I'm pretty sure it would be a disappointment. Yeah, at some point you just have to accept that it's just not gonna happen. You just have to move on, I guess. The good thing is I can make a video about it, so at least I make some money back. Just saying. So yeah, that's the story. I kept telling my friends that I'm actually super glad this happened during the summer rather than in the colder months because if I took all of my favorite vintage suits during autumn or winter time, I would actually hunt them down. All of the reproduction pieces, all of the pieces that I made, that's all good. Actual vintage clothes, I will hire a private detective and find you because <laughs> that's something else. So I'm actually glad it happened when it happened. I'm actually glad it happened to the things that I took because again, if I took my 18th century outfit that I just finished and never photographed, I would be pretty upset. <laughs> I also forgot to mention the, the dress that I got from my friend. I never photographed it and it was actually the first thing that came to my mind when I realized we've been robbed. I was like, I have to tell her because I felt so bad. So I texted her, I was like, it was stolen. Cause I knew how much love and care she put into the dress and then before I even could wear it, it was basically taken away. So yeah, she's making me a new one though, but that was... And apparently my summer was like, let's keep the good vibes going because the most obscure stuff just kept happening to me this summer. So I'm kind of glad it's over. Even though I had a lot of fun and spent time with my friends and family and it was great. It was fantastic, but also what the f <laughs> so yeah, Rome is a fantastic city. I love it. It's gorgeous. The vibes are immaculate, but maybe it's not the safest. Attenzione borse giatrici. Attenzione pickpocket. Also, please don't forget to download Juice Journey for free following the link in the description. See ya.